three, two. Whoa, what's up, what's up, what's up, YouTube? It is your boy Trey back again here for another freaking live stream, and I've got a beautiful guest here with us. You can't see his face. This is uh, just a decision that, you know, he's made, and we respect privacy here, obviously, but this is Bam Investor on the call. Uh, Bam, just say something real quick just so we can hear you all right. Hey, Trey. Thanks for the invite. Awesome. Great to have you here, brother. Oh, it looks like the streaming software might have done something goofy. You got to make sure this is still working okay. I think it's still good. Well, <laughs> that's good. Let's see. Just want to make sure. Looks like they can see us all right. You guys let me know in the chat. Everything working all right? Lamp is lit. <laughs> I just want to make sure this is all good before we start chatting here. Give me one sec. Bam. Yeah, it looks fine. All right, dope. So essentially, you guys can tell by the title of the video, we're going to talk about a couple different assets and, and facets here. And we, we kind of want to briefly touch on the naked shorts. But I think, to be honest with you, that is a waste of, uh, of, of Jim's talent. I think what he's really solid at is the... The AMC price action. He's very good at predicting things that have come to fruition. He's actually predicted a lot of price action movements on his Twitter and his own YouTube page uh, based on what he calls behavioral analysis method, the BAM method. And this is taking into consideration two different things. It's based on emotions, so he can actually quantify the emotions that trade out on, on AMC stock and other securities in the market very, very well. And he's actually predicted what he calls melt up. So we're going to get into this more. He's a way more intelligent guy than I am, but he takes that into consideration with a lot of different trends so one minute candles five minute half hour hour daily weekly monthly he takes a huge wide array of data and analytics and he gives price ranges zones of strength zones of weakness that we can anticipate for amc stock so you know without further ado obviously we just want to introduce you bam just say out of the, the people you know give kind of your background uh, and, and what kind of brought you to amc stock and why you believe to be an asset to the ape community here yeah so um I first became in, engaged in um, sort of the ape community back in, in late April. Um, I took a look at uh, two different stocks. I took a look at GameStop, uh, simple GME, and I took a look at uh, uh, AMC and uh, decided that uh, the model looked more bullish for AMC. Um, so just to pause real quick, I don't mean to interrupt you. What was the that, reason for that, do you think? Uh, you know, I don't know about the the underlying reason. All I know is in my work, it's really easy to see. It's it's basically I'm I'm transferring data to visual, and so it would literally be as easy for you to see as like uh, I don't know. Just think about something that's very easy to predict. So it's just it's in pictures. Too easy. So yeah. what I end up seeing on my side is I see uh, buy signals. I see these things that I sort of try to relate to your audience and and on Twitter as uh, sort of like a trampoline. So that if price drops hard, the harder price drops, the more the sort of trampoline rebound effect happens in the opposite direction. So I have all these set up ahead of time to where I know, based on my different time frame fractals, like a five-minute bar chart or a daily bar chart or a one-hour bar chart, all of these individual fractals have their own individual personality and their setup. So I can tell when there's multiple sort of buy signals, those trampolines that are sitting down below the market waiting to sort of buy the dip. I can tell if those are present in all my different time frame fractals. And then the way my, my work is set up is the larger the fractal, the larger the time frame, meaning like the monthly bar, our chart, the weekly, the daily, the 60 minute, the more powerful. So in ape terminology, my monthly uh, bar chart fractal would be the gorilla. And then you work <laughs> your way all the way down to my 25 tick, which I don't know if that's a spider monkey. Is that a spider monkey? What's the littlest guy that just sort of runs around and eats fruit? I don't know. So that anyway, that's right. the way it works. So I can see visually um, right. how, bullish, <laughs> how bullish things are. And then I have this predictive element of the model that shows me sort of a termination point of the bullish influences of human nature and where that sort of collides with a date in the future. So when I combine both the trampoline effect, the uh, potential upside velocity that would be generated by a pullback, so it's counterintuitive, but a pullback uh, creates something in my model that becomes even more bullish than an uptrend. I combine that with this sort of uh, timing element, which is the future date 
that the zone of strength is supposed to be most powerful. And every now and then I'll get what's called a, you know, a collision date. So basically my, my hourly model might point up into like last Thursday and Friday is a good example, that melt-up window. And my five-minute model is pointing up into that window to a specific uh, time stamp intraday. And my daily model might be pointing up into the exact same two or three days. And so I get this very powerful visual look at um, what is supposed to happen in the future per my model. And then what I do is I match up <clears throat> the timing element with my best guess at the price level. Mm. So in my work, the timing element is much more predictable than the pricing portion. But every now and then I have something that's so compelling that I go public with it, matching time and price. And so that was the case last Thursday and Friday when I had that $32 retest that was potentially going to be hit directly into that Thursday, Friday date. And of course, we melted up 100% and hit my retest, vibrated on it, and then moved up even higher. So that's sort of, you know, in a general sense, how my stuff works. So I've actually got one of your charts pulled up here, and this is from June 3rd. You posted this at about 12.50 p.m. And this is uh, the core on your tweet is, did you trust uh, a Nimoy uh, predictive technology at that TP low? This guy's stock velocity works hard while I sleep. And it's just showing, you know, sort of the chart setup that you've got here. And you've got the hourly triggers, five triggers, one triggers. And we've got just this sort of pulled up here. So I'm not sure if you're going to be able to look at this tweet that you put out on June 3rd at uh, 1250 yeah, or so. Yeah. Walk us through exactly what you were just talking about. These zones of strength, zones of weaknesses, melt ups, meltdowns, the, you know, sort of the things that you've been able to predict. Because I remember probably the one that I was most impressed by is yeah. you predicted that it would bounce from that 37 ish dollar low to sixty four dollars. And you were actually spot on the money outside of a three dollar range to the upside. It actually went to sixty seven dollars that same day. And I was absolutely I was like, whoa. Oh, that's incredible. So walk us through here while we've got this chart pulled up, what you're looking at essentially that's telling you, hey, this is what's going to happen. Like we understand the behavioral analysis method and it's based on that emotion and based on previous trends, but it, we've just got it pulled up here. Walk us through it essentially. Yeah. So uh, for starters, I, I was I was planning on doing the big reveal for this new company, a Nimoy Predictive Technology. I was planning on doing this in you know a few more weeks out into the future. We have a, we have some things that the developers are working on this weekend to get us ready for uh, next Monday, and and all the new subscribers from uh, BAM that we brought in over the past uh, couple weeks are going to get you know free thirty day uh, uh, free thirty day access to our platform here, but. I, I didn't intend for this thing to sort of take off the way it has, but I, I use this because, you know, I'm not allowed to show um, the trading platform that I have some of my behavioral analysis stuff tied into for, you know, licensing purposes. But since I own, along with my partners, the Anemoy Predictive Technology property, I'm allowed to show this. So what I was doing is I was combining the elements of my BAM model, meaning that I had a retest level sitting up at $64.50 that was an open retest waiting to be hit. Right. And then I looked at my BAM time, timing element, right, the window of strength, the zone of strength I talk about, Z-O-S. That's a zone of strength, okay? Then I use my Anemoy predictive technology terminal, right, the Anemoy terminal, to show people in real time in those videos that I tweeted out um, that, hey, price is dropping down like a stone. It was sort of a scary moment there in the morning. It was a, that was a big price move. Where right? this yellow uh, uh, highlight is, right? Seven. Well, if you go to the far, um, I don't know what you have up right now, to be honest with you, but I have the live chart up in front of me from my terminal. So, okay. you know, in, in general, we started the day at, what, up at $67 and crashed down to 37 or whatever into, uh, um, you know, roughly uh, uh, 820 in the morning, something like that. That's about right, yeah. 11 o'clock, 1120, right? Okay. So anyway, when that happened, the um, basically this is a catch the falling knife setup in a Nimoy because the velocity to the upside when price attacked that hourly trigger, um, the velocity was a positive 86 cents. So it's sort of a no-brainer to go long per the model. I'm not a financial advisor, and I never tell people whether to buy or sell, but per the model, it would want to go long, put a stop underneath that hourly trigger, and then our, our, the, the beautiful part about this from a risk-reward standpoint was that our bogey 
was up at you know sixty four dollars and fifty cents into a specific timestamp. So I mean that's an example of something that's not going to happen every day. If even if I were to to have the the visibility and the granularity that I'm offering right now, sort of you know in the Twitter world, mm. but it's but it is an example of how things work when everything aligns in both my behavioral analysis model and my uh, anemoid terminal. So before we kind of dig into, you know, where I think that your behavioral analysis method is really interesting, which is Friday, I kind of want to dig into each of these different, uh, what, what you could call gears to the system. So you see hourly triggers here. I can also see the, the velocity for hourly, five, and then the one velocity. You kind of want to just walk through, because what it looks like to me is you had a bounce essentially off of the hourly trigger acting as support, you know, this, this essentially catch the falling knife situation like you were just mentioning, and it bounced back up to $64. So what are these hourly triggers? Why are they so important? What are the metrics for those? And then the velocity, what do each of these mean? So I can't get too far into the secret sauce. Sure. I mean, you know, <laughs> that makes um, but what it means from a, a user's perspective is um, <clears throat> when prices <laughs> when when prices above that hour, um, you're generally safe to be long a stock or to be looking at being on the long side of a stock. If the price, which is the black line there, is below my hourly trigger, then it's sort of telling you, you know, even if our bot, which is displayed in real time, whether he's long, short, or flat, um, even if the bot is, uh, uh, well, if price is below that hourly trigger, it's, it's, it's usually a pretty dangerous situation to buy unless... Positive divergence. I don't want to. I might lose some of the people out there. But a positive divergence basically is if price is making a lower low, but you know the elephants, right? I always talk about tracking the elephants' footsteps, which is what I'm doing here. Mm. Their footprints. So if the elephants are in there buying, I can see it in this terminal. So basically, there'll be a positive divergence, pretty similar to what you get in more standard uh, uh, momentum oscillators that. And um, so basically, as price makes a lower low into that hourly trigger, it's really obvious when we drill down into the uh, five-minute velocity and the one-minute velocity that they were not making posting more extreme velocity readings of the downside. So that's a clear sign that the elephant is in there accumulating, buying, is letting up. So you combine all three of these time frames. The hourly velocity was still strongly to the upside. Price was attacking the hourly trigger and reversing off of it. You check that. That's bullish. Right. The five-minute velocity was not in agreement that the stock was ready to fall apart. On the contrary, there were buyers stepping in, less selling pressure. You check that box. And then the one-minute velocity also told, told the same story. And then um, our algorithm has some other things worked into it so that it tells you when the bot <clears throat> actually goes long. Um, I don't have the, the intelligence of the behavioral analysis built into the Anemoy terminal at this point, and I probably won't. Um, I use that for a, a private partners fund that I run, and we have an automated. We have all the automated strategies running, you know, in a very scalable place that's unhackable, and uh, so that's what we're doing. So I, I won't share everything with the public. Sure. But in my humble opinion, uh, once we turn people loose into the Anemoy uh, environment and give them some hand holding and teach them a sort of uh, how to use this tool, I think, I think I can completely level the playing field to where the little guy with 30 minutes of training can compete with any of the big guys. And I've, I've said this before in one of my videos, I think the, the ultimate <laughs> insult to injury is if all of you out there listening right now are beating the big guys and the big guys are sitting behind a $25,000 Bloomberg <laughs> terminal dabbling on something that I'll probably charge $7.95 a month for for the basic product and all of a sudden you're you know you're in there mixing it up with the big guys throwing some elbows that's kind of my goal. Sweet man. So let let me uh let me take your behavioral analysis method. We we've kind of gotten into what this is and apply it to Friday. We've had conversations. Right. Am I still with you? Yeah, can you still hear me okay? Still good? Can you still hear me okay? Trey, I can't hear you right now. But I can hear you okay. Can you hear me? I think your streaming is having a problem. 
You all right? I can hear you now. All right. Still good? I cannot hear you. I can hear you right now. All right. So, yep, so essentially all I wanted to bring this into, I wanted to kind of round this can't, back. I can't hear you now, Trey. I can't hear you at all. All right. I'm going to pull it up on my phone. I'm going to call you real quick. Hey, can you hear me okay? I can hear you. All right, so I've got you pulled back up. We're just going to keep you on my phone here. But anywho, the next thing that I kind of wanted to talk about is essentially how this applies into Friday because we had a, a conversation offline. And there, your, your analysis, your thoughts on what was going to happen here down the road was essentially pretty bullish on Friday. You were anticipating what you'd call a melt-up, which we can think of as essentially a parabolic move. And what's what's really fascinating is your, your behavioral analysis method has been spot on, on on basically predicting a lot of moves, and it didn't happen. So, you know, we, I kind of blocked out a zone right here, and you thought that this zone essentially pointed out some, some trading that is unnatural to AMC's price action and unnatural to the overall move and setup that was uh, on, on the chart. So the scenes that it was their opinion that not only was I under attack, you know, last week, but that uh, these people would probably start to try to game my zones of strength and zones of weakness to make me look bad and, um, you know, make me look like a buffoon and, and try to stop the accuracy of what was going on. Because, you know, quite frankly, you know, there's a couple elements in the success of the model. And I've told people before that, you know, if I were to be trying to do this live with a utility stock or something that does carry a lot of emotion under the surface, I would bomb phenomenally. I mean, I would never stick my neck out on the line and back out of a stock. I decided to handpick this stock because it had all of the really ferocious emotion, human emotion under the surface, bullish and bearish, that's the perfect for very accurate price moves in both time and price, okay? So I was confident before I handpicked this stock and decided to do this, you know, basically forecasting suicide, time and price live in front of an audience, and not only by the day, but intraday timestamps, you know? Strength into a certain time, weakness into a certain time, over and over. Um, and we were hitting, you know, a lot of those timestamps within two minutes to the turning point intraday and and um, so anyway, I, I knew coming into this thing that um, there was a lot of risk. I didn't know whether or not um, some people would try to make me look bad, but I, I was warned about it. People were asking me to only do this privately for the member site. There's no sense in that because if somebody wants to make me look like a buffoon, they've already subscribed to my product and they'd be watching anything I said. So what I told people on Thursday night was that um, don't worry, I know what I'm doing, and, and I sort of have a plan behind this um, coming in. So what that plan was was basically I was, you know, trying to do a little misdirect and sprinkle in some, you know, real data. And I promised the Twitter followers and subscribers that, you know, don't worry, you guys, it's not something that's going to hurt you. It'll only tell me whether or not there's someone in here that's maybe trying to put some extra weight on the stock to make me look bad or prevent a move. So going into Friday, there wasn't, there was never a uh, forecast predicting a melt up. What I was saying is, if we we're moving up into this zone of strength, that we could have the type of move we had last Thursday and Friday. So it definitely mm -hmm. still was in a melt up fractal, and it could kick off and ignite, um, assuming it started to move up. So early in the session, it was tracking perfectly, and into my time zone, my time stamps up and down. And then what happened was, when I gave it a fictitious timestamp, the market started to get really heavy right around that time, and price was driven down about $3. Then when we moved into the time period where I had said, and I had hyped it highly for you know 48 straight hours, that you know we could not only melt up above the old high, but go much higher than that on Friday, and I also pointed out how disruptive that would be to you know, certain people that try to game the market on options expiration Friday, right? A weekly expiration. So what ended up happening is, in my opinion, and we're going to have some experts look at this, and I'll talk a little bit more about, you know, some people that might uh, be able to really look at this at a granular level and have great success. What happened was, as we were moving into my um, 
305. This is New York EFP 305 timestamp, and it's the one that I published as a, as a 1205 because I'm here on the West Coast. As we were moving into that, something very unusual happened. And so and this is that white box that I've got pulled up here on the chart right now. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I don't see that, but I'm looking at the original chart. So okay. What's, um, what happened was for uh, five straight five-minute bars of trading activity um, from 240 EST, moving into my 305 timestamp, uh, the stock traded in less than a one dollar range. So this is a stock that you know, if you if you look at it over the past two days, uh, was obviously a wild trading stock, and even uh, during a five minute bar, uh, had a, had a broad, large range. Now, there's normal pinning activity that goes on every Friday. Um, whether or not there's anything nefarious about that, who knows? Um, but if someone has written the contracts, right, it's originated the calls, originated the puts, and they want to m move to a certain strike price that avoids where all the volume is on the call side and on the put side so that those, you know, those expire worthless and whoever is destroying this brings in all the premium. Um, you know, there are algorithms that if somebody wanted to write those, they probably could do a pretty good job of pinning. Some of it might be a natural force, but there was just something about the the 20 minute period leading into my zone of strength, um, it doesn't look right. So I asked a few people to take a look into the dark pool activity, some smart guys, they thought they saw some, some unusual things going on. And then the most unusual thing about Friday's activity was as soon as it passed through my 305 timestamp, um, the stock immediately dropped $3 during that, uh, the next five minute bar. You know, so you were less than a one dollar range, sometimes like a sixty to seventy cent range, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty five straight minutes, and then it drops three dollars. So to me, that seems like somebody was sitting on this, um, and that they didn't get off of it in time as it rolled through my zone of strength, and and the stock was hit. So uh, if there are some big data guys out there. Um, you know, they're much more talented than I am at drilling down on these things. You know, some of the ape community or someone else who might be listening. I'd encourage you guys to just do a deep dive on that 240 to 305 um, uh, period of trading activity. And then also there's a person who I used to be friendly with who I would consider to be the far, foremost, ex, foremost expert at uh, really taking a, a look at granular trading activity. Um, his name is Eric Scott Hunsider. He's with Nanex. He was the one who was awarded a $750,000 um, whistleblower mm. award, uh, by the SEC. So, I mean, I don't know if there's anyone out there who's as good as he is at sort of doing a, a forensics into price movement and taking a look at if there's anything nefarious. Now, I don't mind having egg on my face if uh, if I'm completely wrong about this, right? Um, I don't mind at all. It would actually dispel some some things that I've thought for a long time, and it would it would bring some real um, it would improve the confidence in our markets. So it would be a win for everybody, I think. Um, you know, I don't want to put Eric on the spot. He's been a pretty private guy for a couple of years here, but um, I'm just saying in general, a, a, someone with that with talent, um, I think could you know either prove that there was something odd going on here or there was not. And if there was not, I, honestly, I don't I don't mind looking like uh, uh, you know looking like a knucklehead. I don't mind. Bam, my uh, my computer is like melting right now. This I can't even see my screens. I, 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 my internet looks good, but this looks like like this thing is crashed. I've never seen this on my computer. So welcome to my world. What the heck just happened? Welcome to my world. Everyone, everyone's thought for the past five years that, uh, that uh, you know what was happening to my cell phone really wasn't happening. What was happening at home at the office wasn't happening. So. That's the other benefit of me going public is welcome to my world. I've got a wired connection right now. I, uh, my internet should be fine. I can't see anything on my screens. Everything just went black. Well, it's possible they're completely wrong. I've got a you know PhD cybersecurity person. I've got a new team that's setting up all my new systems and they're gonna be monitored out of Israel 24 seven. So anyway, 
welcome to my world, but you know, I'm not going away. You're not going away. Call me anytime you want, and uh, we'll talk about anything you want. All right, man. I'm going to try and see if I can figure out what's going on with my computer, and uh, I'll give you a call back. Thanks, Trey. All right. Appreciate it.